Thank you for visiting Mary's Dairy Productions YouTube channel. You're about to watch our production on Blessed Alexandrina Maria da Costa. We hope you enjoy it. It's also available on DVD through our website at www.marysdairyproductions.org. Please share her story with others. Alexandrina Maria da Costa was born in a small rural village named Balazar in Portugal. It was already a place of pilgrimage in the century prior to Alexandrina's birth, due to the appearance of a mysterious cross of raised earth. The cross appeared in June 1832 in the main square of the village in front of the parish church of St Eulalia. The parish priest and the parishioners were astonished and awed to see it. At first the parish priest of Balasar at that time tried to eradicate the cross but was unable to. The people swept and threw water on it but it still remains to this day. A little chapel was built to house the cross in 1832 and the cross still continues to defy all attempts to obliterate it. What was the reason for this phenomenon? Our Lord told Blessed Alexandrina the following. A century ago I ordained that this parish be privileged with the cross as a sign of the crucifixion. The cross was ready, it only wanted a victim. But now I have chosen one to fulfill my divine plans. It is you. Blessed Alexandrina Maria da Costa was born on March the 30th, 1904. She was raised a Catholic by her mother, Maria Anna da Costa, and was taught clearly and devotedly about love of God and love of neighbour. Alexandrina also learned from the example of her mother the importance of prayer before Jesus' real presence in the Blessed Sacrament and the sharing of the little that they had with the poor. Her days started with consecrations to Jesus and Our Lady and her spirituality was deeply Eucharistic and Marian. Blessed Alexandrina had one older sister named Diolinda with whom she was very close. As a young girl, Alexandrina devoted herself to prayer, the study of her faith and attention to her work.
she also loved to contemplate creation from a very young age. To climb trees, grow flowers in the garden, and she had a great passion for singing. She worked in the fields around Balasar as hard as the men. But her employer was cruel to her and humiliated her many times. Eventually, Alexandrina left his employment and after suffering from an illness for a time, she took up sewing for a living, which allowed her to absorb herself in prayer. Blessed Alexandrina might have remained a simple seamstress in Balasar had not a terrible event occurred that transformed her entire life. On Holy Saturday of 1918, Alexandrina and her friend Rosalina were receiving sewing lessons from dear Linda at home. Hearing sudden noises outside the house, Alexandrina went to the window to investigate. Her ex-employer had arrived at the home with two other men and it was clear by the looks on their faces that their intentions were immoral. Alexandrina clutched her rosary and cried out, Jesus, help me. In order to protect her purity, she jumped out of the window, falling 12 feet to the ground below. Despite the horrendous pain that Alexandrina suffered from this fall, she headed for a pile of wood, took up a piece and returned to the room, now armed so as to defend also the virtue of her sister and Rosalina. The men were stunned by her heroic counterattack and fled. But blessed Alexandrina's life was to change forever. Alexandrina's spine had suffered extreme damage from her jump out of the window. Doctors examined her and revealed that the damage was irreversible. Her spine was irreparably injured and her condition would deteriorate. She would eventually become completely paralysed. The little family's worst fears were confirmed when on April the 14th, 1924, complete paralysis set in and Blessed Alexandrina became bedridden at the age of 20. Alexandrina's whole world was now in a tiny upstairs room. Although she had already practiced the virtue of detachment from worldly things, her new situation saw her hidden from the outside world, a prisoner upon a bed of pain. In this new state of pain and confinement, dear Linda devoted all of her time to taking care of Alexandrina while their mother worked to provide for the three of them. To begin with, the sisters struggled to get used to the situation. Alexandrina invited friends to come and visit with her, and she would play cards with them in an attempt to distract herself, asking about the latest news. She was saddened when she was left alone, her eyes fixed upon the ceiling or her window wondering about the passing of the world beyond her little cell. The added worry of the burden of her condition upon her mother and sister added greatly to her sufferings, and so Alexandrina began to pray fervently to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. 
that Our Lady would grant her a cure. But her condition grew steadily worse and worse until the slightest movement caused her agonizing and indescribable pain. It was feared that Alexandrina would die, and so she was given the last rites on several occasions. Every evening her small family would light two candles before the statue of Our Lady and recite the rosary, followed by night prayers. During the day, when she had no friends to distract her from her torments, Alexandrina would meditate, pray and weep, imploring Our Lady to heal her. Sadly, she would sing the tantum ergo, as she had in church, and not having the blessing of benediction, she would ask Jesus for it from heaven and from all the tabernacles in the world. The parish priest let Alexandrina borrow a statue of the Immaculate Heart of Mary for the month of May, which brought her heart much comfort. During the month of May, Alexandrina offered spiritual flowers to our Blessed Lady, which consisted of offering in a spirit of reparation the various sufferings that she underwent throughout the day. Every day in May, she recited an act of consecration to the Blessed Virgin. When the statue was collected by the parish priest at the end of May, Alexandrina was determined to have one of her own. Blessed Alexandrina scraped together all the money that she could to buy a similar statue. In time, this statue of the Immaculate Heart of Mary would be almost kissed smooth. In 1928, Alexandrina learned that her parishioners were organising a pilgrimage to Fatima. Her heart was filled with the greatest desire to go with them, and so she begged Our Lady to obtain this grace for her. Our Lady had appeared in Fatima 11 years earlier to three Portuguese shepherd children and devotion to Our Lady of Fatima was sweeping through Blessed Alexandrina's country. Her doctor and parish priest, however, were in complete opposition to her idea. Because Fatima was 200 miles away, they knew that it would be impossible for Alexandrina to travel since the slightest movement caused her intense pain, and even to touch her or turn her caused her unspeakable suffering. Alexandrina was bitterly disappointed and offered this sacrifice to God, focusing her attention even more determinedly upon her plea for a cure. Remaining upon her bed of intense pain, Blessed Alexandrina herself lived attentively the message of Fatima. She placed a picture of Blessed Jacinta Marto, the youngest of the Fatima seers, over her bed and requested that a little altar be set up with a statue of Our Lady of Fatima, which dear Linda decorated with candles and flowers.
As the months passed and the paralysis remained, Alexandrina began to focus her heart completely upon loving God and suffering for him. A growing love for prayer led her to completely abandon her innocent distractions and she started to long for a life of complete union with Jesus. Seeing in her situation the great power of the cross of Christ, Blessed Alexandrina understood the power of uniting her pains with those of Jesus's. Without knowing quite how, Blessed Alexandrina offered herself to our Lord as a victim soul for the conversion of sinners and then asked him also for a love of suffering. She no longer prayed for a cure and the desire for a recovery died in her. Instead, she understood that suffering was to be her vocation. As she lay alone in her room, Alexandrina made an important connection between her own circumstances and those of our Lord in the Blessed Sacrament. During prayer, she thought of Jesus in the tabernacle in her nearby church and realized that he was a prisoner in the tabernacle, just as she was a prisoner on her bed of pain. She placed herself in spirit before him, offering him constant love and reparation and imploring him to convert sinners. Through this union with Jesus, she was given insights into the terrible consequences of the many grave sins occurring throughout the world and became more convinced that her mission was to offer her sufferings in union with those of Jesus's as a victim soul for the conversion and salvation of sinners. Alexandrina begged Jesus to accept her as a victim and agreed to suffer as much as she could if only sinners could be saved. Our Lord heard Alexandrina's prayer and immediately her pains increased until they became almost unendurable. In a desperate state and racked with fever, Blessed Alexandrina continually made the offering of her agonizing suffering using the prayer given by Our Lady to the three shepherd children. O oh Jesus, this is for love of you, for the conversion of sinners, and in reparation for the offences committed against the Immaculate Heart of Mary. In 1931, Alexandrina entered a state of ecstasy and heard Jesus confirming her vocation as a victim soul when he said to her, Love, suffer, and make reparation. Alexandrina gave her full consent to Jesus' request and asked him for the necessary grace and strength to fulfill her mission of suffering for humanity. As the months of her endless suffering stretched into years, Blessed Alexandrina held a great secret desire that the holy sacrifice of the Mass would be celebrated in her little room. Jesus was to grant that desire when Alexandrina learned that a visiting Jesuit priest named Father Pinho was preaching in the villages. Alexandrina told Dialinda of her desire and dear Linda promised to do all that she could. On November the 20th, 1933, Father Pinho celebrated the first mass in her little room. This holy Jesuit priest was to become spiritual director to both Alexandrina and dear Linda. Alexandrina was overwhelmed with joy and said that
that with that first mass, our Lord began to increase his tenderness towards her, and at the same time, the weight of his cross. At first, Blessed Alexandrina did not tell Father Pinho about the mystical experiences that she was undergoing until Jesus told her. Obey your spiritual father in everything. You have not chosen him. It was I who sent him to you. In 1934, Blessed Alexandrina entered into a profound ecstasy in which Christ invited her to draw closer and share in the intense fire of his redeeming pain. Jesus said to her, Give me your hands because I want to nail them with mine. Give me your feet because I want to nail them to my feet. Give me your head, because I want to crown it with thorns as they did to me. Give me your heart, because I want to pierce it with a lance as they did to mine. Consecrate your body to me. Offer yourself wholly to me. Help me in the redemption of mankind. Alexandrina consented and thus began a period of even more intense suffering. Her mission to suffer for the conversion and salvation of sinners soon attracted the attention of the powers of darkness. From the year 1934, Satan began to launch a series of attacks upon Blessed Alexandrina, beginning with terrifying visions, howling and blasphemous cries. He ordered her to stop using and wearing the rosary, the crucifix, the brown scapula, medals and holy water. He appeared to Alexandrina and said, that he had secrets to confide to her, but first she must take off those objects which he hates. Her refusal to remove her sacramentals enraged Satan, who even threatened to destroy her. So powerful was Alexandrina's offering of her suffering and prayers for sinners, that Satan often hurled her from her bed, sometimes at night and sometimes during the day. Her body became covered with purple bruises. On one occasion, many startled witnesses saw Blessed Alexandrina's bed become enveloped in billowing smoke from which came a terrible stench. Her one consolation throughout all of these attacks was that the many people who came to assist her were given great proofs of the existence of hell and that they surely would not offend our Lord anymore. Alexandrina pleaded with Jesus to end the diabolical assaults but he explained that they were necessary in order to save more souls. Jesus told her, my daughter, suffering is the key to heaven. I have endured so much to open heaven to mankind, but for many it was in vain. They say, I want to enjoy life. I have come into the world only for enjoyment. They say, hell does not exist. I have died for them, 
and they say they did not ask me to do so. In order to save them, I select certain souls and lay the cross upon their shoulders. Happy the soul who understands the value of suffering. My cross is sweet if you carry it for love of me. I chose you from your mother's womb. I watch over you in your great difficulties. It was I who chose them for you that I might have a victim to offer me much reparation. Lean upon my sacred heart and find therein strength to suffer everything. Our Lord pleaded for Eucharistic reparation, saying, I remain in the tabernacle night and day waiting to give my love and grace to all who would visit me. But so few come. I am so abandoned, so lonely, so offended. Pray for the unhappy sinners whose slaves of their passion do not remember that they have a soul to save and that eternity awaits them in a short while. Many men do not believe in my existence. They do not believe that I live in the tabernacle. They curse me. Others believe, but do not love me and do not visit me. They live as if I were not there. I have chosen you to keep me company in those little refuges. Many of them are so wretched, but what riches inside? Like Mary Magdalene, you have chosen the better part. You have chosen to love me in the tabernacles, where you can contemplate me not with the eyes of the body, but with those of the soul. I'm truly present there as in heaven, body, blood, soul and divinity. You have chosen that which is most sublime. In 1935, Blessed Alexandrina received a series of messages from Jesus warning that a Second World War would take place as a punishment for the sins of humanity and that this could only be averted by the consecration of the world to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Alexandrina was asked to petition the Holy Father to perform this consecration and from then on to offer all of her sufferings and prayers that the consecration would be achieved. Jesus said to her, Implore pardon. I am very offended. What dreadful criminals populate hell. I warned Sodom and Gomorrah, but it had no effect. Unhappy ones, the same punishment will be meted out on you. War was soon to break out over Europe, and Jesus lamented this fact to Alexandrina, telling her that he had no choice but to punish humanity in this way, because of the innumerable and terrible sins being committed throughout the world. Alexandrina once again offered herself as a victim of atonement for the sins of humanity, as Jesus said to her, Every moment, Countless sinners are provoking the wrath of God on the world, the most tremendous wrath. Unhappy ones if they are not converted. O world, acknowledge your crimes or you will be destroyed.
Alexandrina cried out to Jesus that she wished to be his lightning rod of wrath. In October 1938, Blessed Alexandrina consented to undergo Christ's passion to help bring about the consecration of the world to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. She said that Jesus told her she would have to pass through all of his passion from Gethsemane to Calvary, beginning on the following day, and that she would repeat the sufferings every Friday immediately after midday until three o'clock in the afternoon. Jesus showed her the perilous state of souls and the enormity of sin in the world. Jesus said to her, Penitence, penitence throughout the world, penitence. He implored that the world would acknowledge its crimes or be destroyed. Woe to the world. Divine justice cannot support it anymore. The day before Blessed Alexandrina's mystical suffering of the Passion was to start, the tension in her home was palpable. Alexandrina warned her spiritual director of everything, and both of them waited anxiously, as neither of them could imagine what was going to happen. The night before, Alexandrina's agony of soul was intense but the suffering of her body even greater. The horror that she felt inside of her was unspeakable. Jesus said to Alexandrina, See my daughter, Calvary is ready. Do you accept? Alexandrina willingly accepted, and she entered into ecstasy. All those present in the room were astounded by what happened next. At the hour fixed by Jesus, this woman who had lain in her bed completely paralysed for over 14 years suddenly got up. Regaining the use of her limbs in her frail body, Alexandrina was able to move around the room and in this way the Passion of Christ was reenacted through her for the first time. Moved and astonished witnesses watched Blessed Alexandrina suffer the agony in the garden, the betrayal of Judas and the trial of Jesus. The scourging, the crowning of thorns, the prison, the meeting of Our Lady. The falls under the cross were so visible that they left no room for doubt. She was nailed to the cross in a heart-rending scene, bowed her head and died. Alexandrina's falls during the Passion often caused severe bruising, but she begged Jesus out of deep humility not to give her the stigmata or any other visible signs of the passion. Blessed Alexandrina underwent these ecstasies each Friday from midday to 3 p.m. 180 times. She did not see or hear anything about her and even when vigorous efforts were made to disturb her, she did not react in any way. Many medical experts present could not explain what took place.
when Alexandrina carried the cross to Calvary, it was found completely impossible to lift her from the floor even one inch. When Father Pinho asked her about the weight of the cross, Alexandrina replied that it had the weight of the whole world. After suffering the passion of our Lord, Alexandrina turned towards the parish church and spoke to Jesus crucified. To begin with, Blessed Alexandrina's extraordinary sufferings for mankind were hidden from the world and only a few people were aware of them. But in 1941, word spread and this caused Alexandrina great suffering, for she was now to become the focus of great attention. Thousands of pilgrims began to visit her and crowd her room. Despite her continued extreme suffering between each passion ecstasy, Blessed Alexandrina never tired of urging her visitors, frequent Holy Communion, and the daily recitation of the Rosary. She would point to the picture of Blessed Jacinta Marto and urge people to imitate Jacinta's example of sacrifice. She endlessly advocated the consecration to the Immaculate Heart of Mary through the brown scapula and pleaded with people to renounce sin, weeping as she said, O sinners, I am enduring a life of terrible suffering on your behalf. Convert yourselves, sin no more, sin no more. Blessed Alexandrina was also tormented by the terrible smell of sin, and no amount of flowers or perfumes held up to her nose could stop the torment of the same vile smell. In 1942, Alexandrina's suffering increased terrifyingly during Holy Week. By Holy Thursday, the pain abated slightly and she did not have her usual fear of the passion that she usually suffered each Friday. Blessed Alexandrina realized that the consecration of the world to the Immaculate Heart of Mary had been decided upon. On Good Friday morning, she heard Jesus announce to her in a tone of triumph, Glory to Mary! The world will be consecrated to her. It belongs to Jesus and the mother of Jesus. Jesus told Blessed Alexandrina that the Holy Father had decided to consecrate the world to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. Pope Pius XII actually performed the consecration on October the 31st, 1942.
Alexandrina was overwhelmed with joy that the consecration had been done and that her mission of suffering was now over. But in fact, her mission of suffering was not over. She was to enter a new and even more astounding phase, a 13-year fast in which she would miraculously live on the Holy Eucharist alone. Jesus told Blessed Alexandrina, You will not take food again on earth. Your food will be my flesh. Your blood will be my divine blood. Your life will be my life. You receive it from me when I unite my heart to your heart. Do not fear, my daughter. You will not be crucified any more as in the past. And now a new trial awaits you, which will be the most painful of all. But in the end, I will carry you to heaven and the Holy Mother will accompany you. On Good Friday 1942, Blessed Alexandrina started a total fast which continued 13 years until her death, taking no food or drink whatsoever, but receiving Holy Communion each day with great devotion. Blessed Alexandrina was strictly observed for 40 days in a hospital to have the fast medically certified. The strict doctors and medical staff certified that after 40 days of continuous study and observance of her, they were left perplexed. With this phenomenon inexplicable to everyone else, Alexandrina knew the cause of it, for Jesus had told her that she was living on the Eucharist alone, because he wanted to prove to the world the power of the Eucharist and the power of his life in souls. Another trial arrived for Alexandrina when her spiritual director, Father Pinho, was moved to Brazil. She now found herself without a spiritual director and was deeply grieved. Learning of this trial, Sister Lucia of Fatima sent Alexandrina a holy card with a note assuring her of her prayers that she might obtain a new spiritual director. Together, dear Linda and Alexandrina prayed. Alexandrina's physical condition grew worse and she received the last sacraments. But help arrived for Alexandrina in the form of Father Umberto Pasquale, who was a renowned Salesian priest. Father Pasquale was also a close friend of Sister Lucia of Fatima, and after meeting Alexandrina, became her new spiritual director and encouraged her to continue to dictate her diary. Alexandrina's condition had made it increasingly difficult for her to write, so all of her correspondence, many of her thoughts, and the messages she received from Jesus and Our Lady were dictated in obedience to the request of her spiritual directors, to dear Linda who wrote them all down. When dear Linda was unable to write because of other duties, a local school teacher known as Seozina assisted her in this task and wrote down the autobiography dictated by Alexandrina little by little, considering it a great privilege to sit by her side and write. Blessed Alexandrina soon offered all of her sufferings and prayers in union with the Seleucians throughout the world but especially for the youth. Jesus said to Blessed Alexandrina, If you knew how much I love you, you would die of joy. 
I have established my home in your soul. I want you to preach devotion to the tabernacles. I want you to kindle in souls devotion to this prisoner of love. I do not stay in this world only for those who love me, but for everyone. Even those engaged in work can console me. In her final years, Alexandrina increasingly prayed for the church, as Jesus told her that it was facing a great crisis. He said to Blessed Alexandrina, Tell my ministers to be vigilant, for the devil is preparing a massive assault on the church. But pray and trust, victory will be mine. To the people who continued to visit her, Blessed Alexandrina constantly exhorted them to live the message of Fatima, telling them to make reparation to our Lord in the adorable Eucharist. Our Lord pleaded to Alexandrina for more victim souls, to turn the scales of divine justice, and she would tell the many thousands who visited her, adding that she felt she was shouldering the burden almost alone. Her gaze was so full of pity that many would break down in tears at her glance. By June 1953, she was receiving as many as 6,000 visitors a day and imploring with them to live the message of Fatima, saying, Pray the rosary devoutly every day. Practice the first Saturday devotion. Consecrate yourselves to the Immaculate Heart of Mary through the brown scapula of Our Lady of Mount Carmel. Our Lord told Alexandrina, Vanities and extravagance in the world must cease. Let those exhibiting their bodies clothe themselves. Let modesty reign. Penance. Prayer. Much prayer is needed. In early 1955, Blessed Alexandrina lay for several months in agonizing pain, worse than anything she had ever suffered before. On October the 12th, 1955, Mass was celebrated in Blessed Alexandrina's room and she received Holy Communion. On the morning of October the 13th, 1955, the 38th anniversary of Our Lady's last appearance at Fatima, and the day on which the miracle of the sun took place. Blessed Alexandrina received a vision of the Immaculate Heart of Mary, who said to her, I am about to take you. Blessed Alexandrina received Holy Communion for the last time at 8am, and afterwards delivered her final message to those present in the room and to all humanity crying out. Do not sin, the pleasures of this life are worth nothing. Receive communion, pray the rosary every day, this sums up everything. Alexandrina suffered extreme pain throughout the whole day, which she bore with great fortitude to the very end. At 8pm, she kissed the crucifix for the last time. At 8.29, the pure white soul of Alexandrina Maria da Costa took flight to heaven forever.
News of her death spread throughout Portugal and thousands came to venerate and touch the body of Alexandrina, who had been a living miracle of the Eucharist. Blessed Alexandrina was buried in a humble tomb with her face turned towards Jesus in the tabernacle as she had requested. She predicted that her body would turn to ashes without decomposing and when she was disinterred in 1978 into a small chapel, this was found to be the case. After her death, Sister Lucia of Fatima wrote to Blessed Alexandrina's spiritual director saying, May the Lord grant that Alexandrina's cause of beatification advance as quickly as possible for the glory of God. It is necessary that such a materialistic world sees that there are still souls capable of being raised into the realms of the supernatural. A plea to sinful humanity that Alexandrina had previously dictated was engraved on her tomb at her request. Sinners, if the ashes of my body can be useful to save you, approach. If necessary, pass on the ashes, trample on them until they disappear, but never sin again. Sinners, there is so much that I would like to tell you. This vast cemetery could not contain all that I would like to say. Do not offend our dear Lord any more. Convert yourselves. Do not lose Jesus for all eternity. He is so good. Enough of sin. Love him. Love him. Alexandrina Maria da Costa was beatified on the 25th of April 2004 by Pope John Paul II. I want you to set fire to the world with this love of my divine heart, today extinguished in men's hearts. Set fire. Set fire. I want to give my love to all men. I want to be loved by all. They do not accept it and do not love me. By you, I want this love to be kindled in all humanity. Just as by you, the world was consecrated to the immaculate heart of my blessed mother. Thank you.